At the beginning of this year, I made a tutorial in my regular, like, shorter, very edited down style, showing you how to create this kind of time freeze parallax effect. And while most people seem to enjoy and find that tutorial helpful, I did get a few requests for a bit of a longer, more detailed, and maybe a bit easier to follow version of that tutorial. So that's what I'm trying to do today in this kind of extended version of the same tutorial. I'm going to take you through the entire effect and how I made it. And this is actually the exact shot that I made. I'm recording this after I finished making it. So you're going to see how I made this exact effect that's on screen right now. I've been considering doing one of these kind of extended like uncut style tutorials every week in addition to the two weekly uploads I'm doing this summer. So if you think I should do that or think maybe I shouldn't do that, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. But let's go ahead and get into the process of creating this effect. So of course the first thing that I need to do for this effect is obviously scale my layer down so that it actually fits into the composition. I think 42 percent is usually good. There we go. And the first thing we need to do for this effect is think about our shot and how we need to go about creating the effect. So the basic concept here is that we're cutting apart the different layers of depth in the shot and then animating them to move separately and have a parallax between them. So I'll show you what I mean by that later. But the first thing we need to do is think about how many different layers of depth we have in the shot. So in this shot, I have three. There's me closest to the camera, then there's this pole back behind me, and finally the background behind the pole. So the first thing that we need to do is separate these out into their own individual layers, and I'll start by duplicating the layer to have one layer in our composition for each layer of depth in the shot. So I'll call this one me, duplicate it, call it pull and then duplicate it once again and call this background. So now we have a layer in our composition for each layer in the shot and I'm going to start by selecting the me layer and then using the freehand mask tool just going into layer mode and then masking around my entire body to separate me from the rest of the shot. So I'll be right back after I finish doing that. Now that we've done that, we can move on to isolating the next layer, which will be our pole layer. So I'm just going to mask this one out. It's not going to be nearly as difficult because all we need for this one is some good old straight lines. So I'll just mask all the way around this. And then we'll be finished with this part of the process, thankfully. So I'll just finish up going all the way around this second layer, complete that, and then as we can see, we have those two layers separated from their background. And the basic concept here is that we can now move a virtual camera in the shot and we'll be able to see that parallax between these different layers. But obviously there's a bit of a problem here that's going to make the effect not so realistic and that's that when this layer moves we can see that it's still back there on the background because we haven't actually separated it from the background we've basically copied it and lifted it up and the same goes for the pole right here and there are two different ways that you can solve this problem basically you need to get the background to where we can't see the pole and we can't see me so the easiest way to do this and the way that you should try to do if you can is to shoot a clean plate so what I have here is basically 
an example of a clean plate. I'm going to scale it down to be 42%, same size as the rest of the layers. And as we can see, I basically just, well, took this photo and then moved out of the shot and took another photo that I wasn't in. So as we can see, we already have me separated from that part of the background. So if we move the layer that has me on it, we'll be able to see what's behind that and we don't have that problem with two of me showing up. However, this mid-ground layer, the pole here, is still going to be an issue because even though I could move out of the shot, I couldn't move the pole out of the shot. Believe me, I tried and I just couldn't do it, forgive me. So what we have to do is basically paint out the pole from this layer using other parts of the layer and the way that I'm going to do that is to start out by deleting this background layer with me on it because we won't need that and then renaming our clean plate layer to background so this is our new background layer and now what I'm going to do is start to paint out that pole by making this background into its own composite shot I'll just call it background once again and what we need to do here is use other parts of this layer, copy and paste them over the pole so we can cover it up. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start out by scaling this down just so that it fits into our composition. Right about there should do it. And now I'm going to duplicate that layer. And now what I'm going to do on that duplicated layer is draw a mask around some of the trees right here. And then, as we can see, once we've isolated that part of the layer, if we move it over, we can move it to where it covers that pole. And obviously this isn't great because we can see the seam where we've masked that layer out, so we can just go into the mask, feather it out a bit to just cover up that seam. That should do it. And we can just look at how that looks. And clearly this isn't perfect. We can still see if we look closely that this tree is kind of coming out of nowhere. But this should be good enough, especially since it's in the background. And I'm actually going to try and blur this layer out later. So you probably won't have to worry about little issues like that, just if it looks good enough. So if I go back into my main composition, turn the other layers back on, and scale this layer up. Scale this layer back up so that it matches the rest of the composition. And as we can see, if we move the pole layer, there's nothing behind it showing. So now we have done a pretty good job of separating these individual layers out. And what we can do now is move on to separating them and creating a parallax animation between them. Basically, the way that I'm going to do this is by adding a new camera into my composition. And then, once that camera shows up any day now, I'll highlight all three of my layers and turn them from 2D layers into three-dimensional layers. So now we'll be able to space them out in 3D space and animate the camera as if it's an actual camera in the scene. So I'm going to select the first layer with me on it and then go into the transform properties for that layer. And as we can see, we have a transform property of position. So what I'm going to do is take this last one, which is the distance from the camera basically, and move this layer a little bit closer to the camera than it was before. So I'm just moving this closer to that three-dimensional, basically, fake camera. And now I'm going to do the same for my other two layers. I'm actually going to turn this to half display resolution so it doesn't lag as much and have quite as like, choppy of a display. And then I'm just going to take the position um, property for that pole layer and move it a bit closer to the camera as well but not quite as close as we moved me. And I'm actually gonna move me a little bit closer to the camera than I was before. And now, as we can see, if we select our camera, go into the transform and animate the position, there's a bit of a more realistic parallax between those layers. So we can see when we change the position, 
they're not all moving at the same rate. If we look at my arm here, we can see the trees moving at a slightly different rate than my arm, which mimics the parallax effect that you have in reality. So now all we would have to do is animate the camera. We can just set a keyframe for the position, move to the end of the shot, and then I'm going to say let's just move the camera in a bit closer to our subject and then have it move up a bit, not quite enough to obscure the top of the layer. And then as we can see, that looks all right, but I'd like for this to be a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to add a new grade over this and then add a shake effect onto that grade. So this will be applied to the entire shot. And then I'm just going to set the amount to be not too much, maybe like five. Set the speed way down around like 0.2. And then that will give us a little bit of just kind of sort of realistic camera shake. This looks all right. There's nothing wrong with it. And if you wanted to just use this method and stop here, that would be fine. But there's a bit of a different, slightly more time consuming technique that you can use to get a bit of a more realistic camera motion. And that's by tracking the camera motion of an actual shot and mapping it onto that digital camera. So I'm gonna start out by deleting that grade with the shake effect on it. And then on my camera layer, I'm just going to completely reset the transform properties so it's not animated at all. And then we can see I have this shot in my media bin that's basically just a shot where I drew two points on a piece of paper, taped it up to my wall, and then moved the camera towards it. So I'm going to be taking that camera motion and putting it onto this shot. So I'm just going to select the part of this shot that I want, drag it down into my clip, rename it, who cares, rename it track. And now I'll just go into tracks in the control tab and make a new track for this layer. And I'm going to use a two point track so that I can track not only position, but also scale and rotation to get the full camera motion. Now I'll just position the tracking points over these dots. And once I've done that, I'll just go in here do a couple frames to make sure it has it, and then track forward through the entire shot. Once we've finished completely tracking our clip, I'm going to use the tracking data to stabilize this shot. So what I'm going to do is come into the tracking settings, change this from transform to stabilize, and then I'm going to enable rotation and scale so that we're not only tracking the position, we can also track how the camera is rotating and how it's moving in and out. So now I'll just click apply. And then as we can see, when we go back into the viewer, that layer has been stabilized in such a way that we can't see that camera motion. So what I'll do now is just turn off the visibility for that layer, and then parent my camera layer to the clip that we tracked. And now if we play through, we can see that our virtual camera moves in the same way that our actual camera did. Pretty nifty effect, but if you want to just, you know, animate the camera to move forward and then add a fake shake effect over it, I understand. And then there's one final little effect that I like to add to just give this a little bit more realism and as I said before to help hide the little imperfections in the background there and that's just to take a blur effect and put it on the background so I'm gonna blur that out to about 10 and then I'll put a little bit of a blur on the pole as well blur that layer out like maybe three not very much just three or four, enough to see that it's in the background and simulate a little bit of depth of field. Finally, I'm just gonna add a color grade over this and then we'll be done with this entire effect. And there it is, the entire 
uncut process of how you create this time freeze effect or whatever you want to call it. Especially if you're someone who's been requesting a more detailed version of this tutorial, I hope you found it informative and if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two or maybe three if I start doing these extended tutorials weekly, filmmaking tutorials every single week. So subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Most importantly, keep creating and I'll see you in the next tutorial.